In this video, we're going to review a subscriber's model and see if we can help connect the pieces. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to take one of the subscriber's models uh, that sent this in, and we're going to try to help connect the two pieces, the upper and the lower sections together. So as I'm looking at this, the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna turn both into box display mode. When I do this, I can see that we've got a crease on this upper edge here, and that's probably the first thing that I want to adjust. So I wanna get rid of that crease, at least while I'm connecting things together, we can always put that crease back. So again, when you're looking at these edges, you can see that the edges are darker if they have a crease. The next thing that I want to look at is the number of patches. So as we move around, what we really want to see is vertices that are going to connect with each other. We don't want to weld these things together and create any T-points unless we're actually meaning to. And then the last thing um, I will notice from looking at this model is these divisions here, I'm assuming are, are meant to actually connect. Uh, one thing that I had or one issue that I had with um, the model that I made is I actually end up bringing these all the way to the back. I found that it was easier to, uh, to combine them together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use insert point and I'm going to carry this all the way back to the back. And then I'm going to repeat that process and um, I'm going to go ahead and split that up here. And I actually, I want to repeat that again because I want to get rid of some of the stuff in here. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to come all the way just to that midpoint and say, okay. So that way I can take some of these faces and I can get rid of them. So let's go ahead and get rid of these. For right now, I'm going to leave uh, these two right here. And simply because there's nothing on the back for us to connect to just yet. So I want to make sure that we do that. When I'm looking around this model, a couple things that I do want to sort of mention, and, and these are just kind of general notes. When we're modeling stuff like this with form bodies, there are a couple areas that I, I had some difficulties with, like this transition here. And when we look at this in a box display, these are the kinds of things that we want to identify and pick out. So you can see that this line, if we go from this vertex right here, to this one, if we drew a straight line between those, and we can temporarily sort of fake this with insert point. If we drew a straight line between that, you can see that this vertex is offset to the inside. And what that's telling me is, is I need to manipulate these around a little bit. And again, I'm gonna do this in plane. And what I'm looking to do, again, is, is try to create those smooth transitions. When we look at this from the side, we wanna see the same thing. We wanna see a nice smooth transition. You can see that the width between these might need to be pulled a little bit. And then this one here may be pulled. And then that one there potentially pulled. So you can see that we can't see the roof in this view. It goes up and then back down, which tells me that this edge likely needs to come down a little bit because we really want to have that below the roof line because these cars, they're, they're going to have some curvature to the roof. And we've got a T-point here, probably fine, but uh, something that we want to be, uh, be mindful of when we convert this back. And again, let's look at this from the top and just kind of smooth some of this stuff out. And these are the things that we, we want to pay attention to. So I'm going to bring this sort of forward, maybe bring this entire edge inward just a little bit, bring this one in just a little bit. And again, this is a very visual process. There's not a tool, there's not something where we can just say, let's go ahead and and sort of smooth all these out. In other modeling programs, like poly true poly modeling programs that are not T-splines, you do have those tools. You have some sculpting tools and things where you can just sort of move the cursor around and smooth things out. We don't have that infusion with this T-spline, so we have to manually do that. Now let's get started trying to connect it. This is where the root of a lot of the problems come from. I had issues with this. And uh, obviously that was all recorded in the video series. So what we're gonna try to do is connect these two. And I'm gonna use the weld vertices. Weld vertices is my friend. And we wanna go from the point that we wanna move to the point where we wanna locate. And you notice that I'm doing this in box display mode. In box display mode, I'm not gonna have any idea 
or indication if we have a problem until I try to make this uh, smooth display. So it, it kind of, it helps me because I'm not too concerned with what's happening. Now this one here is, is a little tricky. I actually wanna move this vertex back and I'm gonna move this one up. And the reason I'm doing that is because the line of this part of the car body, I liked where it was and I wanna move the things out to meet it. And then back here is where it's gonna to start to get tricky. I actually want, uh, you can see there's a T point here. We're not gonna to attach to that. I actually wanna bring this vertex probably back to here. And then you'll notice what happens is I don't really have any other way to attach it in here. So I don't have the control I need to make that work. So I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna take this edge here and using modify edit form, we'll go to a right view. Again, I really wanna to try to work in plane whenever possible. And I'm gonna move this back. This is gonna make that sort of sail. And then I wanna come in and I want to insert a point. And I'm gonna do that by breaking this up. I'm gonna carry it over here. And then that gives me the vertex that I can weld together. So now that I've sort of connected that point, I'm gonna to go to weld vertices. I'm gonna bring this up to here. This one needs to go away. And the way that we do that is we find that vertex and we hit delete. Notice that it's, it's failing to delete it. It won't let us delete. It lets us get rid of edges and faces, but in this case, it won't delete it. So we can actually just take that vertex and we can move it to here. And that'll put those edges together for us. There's a little bit more cleanup that has to happen with moving some things around. You can see that, again, this goes in and then back out, and that's something we, we typically wanna avoid, so we either need to bring this in or we need to bring that out, depending on how the car shape is, is going to change. And remember that we can also use things like soft modification. This is something we didn't really talk about much, but soft modification allows us to make changes, and those changes we can have them propagate near or far depending on our values. I'm not gonna use soft modification here, but just note if you have a shape that you really are trying to preserve, you don't wanna make drastic changes, then you can use that. Now this is gonna get tricky because we, we don't really have these connected. So what I wanna do is I wanna connect this down to here, and I'm gonna do that with bridge. So I'm gonna to go to modify, we could extrude it out and we could um, you know, weld vertices, but I'm gonna bridge from this side, side one, to this side. I gotta to try to connect that edge. It's trying to grab an entire loop, which is telling me that it, it, I need that open edge. So to make that happen, let's just select this face and let's delete it. Now we've completely separated this piece from the rest of the model. And that's okay. We're going to delete that face. We don't need that one either. Then again, we'll go to bridge and we'll try to connect this down to this. We're gonna make sure that we have one face and we're gonna have a preview, make sure that that looks okay, and we'll connect them. All right, so it looks bad right now because there's, there's sort of two triangles that are happening even though this is a single face. And let's just clean it up a little bit. We can do this from the back view, or we can do it from a top view, but we wanna get this vertex sort of below. Uh, what we're, we're trying to do is we're trying to make that sort of pillar or, or sail panel, and we really want it to come more vertically. So it's looking a bit better. Let's cross our fingers and let's try to show this in smooth display. It looks like there might be a crease here, but let's try to go to Alt and three, and it looks like we have been able to achieve it. Now, at this point, because we have connected them, if we wanna put that crease back in, we can simply double click this edge and we can add the crease back in. Now, if the intention is to, is to carry that crease around the headlight, or I'm sorry, around the windscreen, and then potentially add more detail in later, if we wanna carry it down the ridge of the fender where it was originally, we can add that back in. And then now we can take a look at the results. So, so now we're getting to a, a position where things are connected and we can sort of work on that curvature. I, I don't like on this car, I don't like the crease on the hood. On the final version that I did, I, I ended up getting rid of the crease and beveling the edge to add a couple more divisions in there. And I even did the same thing to this. So once the shape is good, and I'm gonna go ahead and save, I'm gonna save this before I go too much farther. So once the shape is good and, and you're happy with the shape, then what we can do is we can bevel this edge 
And we can actually carry that down the hood line and around to the front if needed. So everything looks pretty good here. This is, you know, this is a big challenge. This is a big stepping stone to be able to create something like this. It takes a lot of time to get the nuances right. And every time I try to do a model, I learn something new. I, I learn maybe a slightly different approach. I learn to, uh, you know, sort of appreciate the modeling process. But again, the big takeaway here is to sort of look around at the model in box display and you really want to work towards, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be symmetry, but you want to work towards a consistent patch layout. So when we look at these lines, uh, you know, we, we want to try to make these lines or these edges follow some sort of flow. If we want to bring this vertex down, and again, I'm working all in plane. I'm going to just continue to manipulate these to make them follow the body lines that I want. So I'm gonna put these down a little bit. And you can see here what's happening is I'm taking this midsection and I'm starting to decrease the distance between it. So I wanna carry that patch. And then if I go back and forth between smooth display, you can see that that edge sort of disappears. You can see how the edge itself is going up and down. So it's not, a, it's not true to form when we're working in this modeling approach. It's not true for us to uh, to actually go in and create exactly what we want in box display, but it gets us closer. So it allows us to begin to define these. And if we want more control here, we need to potentially add more edges to get more control here. But, you know, again, this is a, this is a big step. In order to get to this point, um, it's huge. The hood looks great. The um, the curvature looks great. The roof and the, the windscreen looks looks pretty good. Uh, there are a few areas that still need control, but again, these you really can't do much with these until you connect the rest of the geometry. So it's it's again, it's that balance of um, adding too much control too soon is just going to make the model that much harder uh, harder to work on, harder to do. So everything looks great here. You did a great job, and um, hopefully, the way that we connected this was helpful, and uh, you know, it helped you follow that process. Again, I had issues. With doing that on my own it was problematic and and i ended up bringing this all the way to the back of the car and that was really one thing that that helped the connection out um, i did end up having a crease along the inside down here and i think i may have had a crease on the top as well i don't remember at the at the end but i'm going to go ahead i'm going to email this back to you and i'll upload this video so uh, hopefully it'll answer those questions for you but again ask any questions uh, if I can look at models, uh, I certainly will and, and try to answer questions, and hopefully that helps out. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.